Good day, people. It is the 11th of October, 2022, and oh, I've got a lot to talk about today. Yesterday, I made a video. It was uh, quite, not quite so good. I would even advise you not to see it because it's, it doesn't have that much factual information. I did have two videos, actually. One was uh, more of a tourist video, and that's very good. I was in a very great place uh, called Volkovik, and it's... Uh, that's just fascinating. You'd have to see it. I'm not going to tell you about it. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, the political one was just a little bit too sparse. Not enough information. Doesn't tell you too much. You can get a lot better information online. So maybe I just should delete that one. But today, after I was able to, to start reviewing things myself and looking up information, hearing about what the Russians are saying, what's on the news uh, over here in Belarus, you know, I have a lot more to talk about. And a lot of this is not necessarily so much with news, but it's a lot about attitudes and, and uh, you know, the direction that the world is going. And you might think the same way, but, uh, you know, based on, you know, my experiences and living over here and, and, uh, and what I hear, you know, it's, it's just a different perspective. We all have different perspectives. You know, it's like that hole that's, you know, back there, it's below your lower back. You know, we all have one of those, at least most people should. But uh, anyway, uh, but, you know, people now are talking about uh, Belarus entering uh, this war. And I, I haven't necessarily seen any concrete evidence that they are. They're forming some sort of a alliance, uh, uh, the Belarusian um, Ministry of Defense along with the Russian. But it doesn't uh, say anything about making any attacks, you know, and entering the war in that way. It's mostly... Uh, uh, defensive and it's uh, it's going to be based in Belarus and there's no plans to make any kind of invasions into Ukraine but uh, you know I think for Ukrainian purposes of course they have to build it up that way but the reason for for doing this is apparently there is undeniable evidence that Ukraine was planning on making attacks in Belarus and of course they already have had two attacks I remember some months ago there was once I think it was on an Air Force base and uh, they caused an explosion. I don't know if one or two people died in that one. And then they've been openly encouraging Belarusian citizens to sabotage the railroad lines. And um, I was in Minsk once, and they they were talking about uh, a threat of uh, chemical attack in the metro. metro. And uh, so I guess some of these things are coming through, but uh, you know, and not that much has happened yet. But they apparently were planning a major attack. And uh, but one of these uh, strikes that Russia did yesterday, it was uh, I guess it apparently killed a lot of Poles, Polish soldiers that were uh, getting ready to launch an attack. And I don't know if that attack was they said it was to be in Russia, but uh, uh, the leader of Poland has a very extreme and intense hatred of Lukashenko, the leader of Belarus. And there was even a video just some days ago showing Lukashenko cutting wood and said, we have to s cut wood, we have to send wood to Duda, you know, the leader of Poland, because we don't want him to freeze for this winter. And <laughs> of course, it was, it was just meant to be funny. And, uh, but it was funny. You have, to, you have to, you know, go with that. But a lot of things that people don't understand about Lukashenko, you know, it's a little bit like Trump. You know, Trump is now pleading to stop this because it's going to be a nuclear war. And everybody was, uh, you know, the way Trump, sort of acts everybody's thinking oh he's gonna get us into a nuclear war it's the same sort of thing you know they talk about Lukashenko you know being some sort of a warmonger or whatever he wants to go to war but he's been there for a long time they talk about uh, that he's been there for so long uh, but then how come there has never been any wars there's never been any kind of a military hostilities uh, since Lukashenko has been there the truth of the matter is even if people talk the way you don't like the way they talk just like like Donald Trump. There was once a guy named Jesus, I think I've said this in, a, in another video, a guy named Jesus, and he said to know them by their fruits. And, and if, if, you're, if you were to apply that to Lukashenko, you would think that Lukashenko is almost like Gandhi. You know, he's done so much for this country. I've, I've, I've been in, I was here in this country in 2001, and the, the change is absolutely phenomenal. Belarus has moved, you know, it's like, I, I think, am I in Germany? Am I in Western Germany and the, you know, at the height of, you know, after everything's been rebuilt? I mean, it's, it's not that it's perfect. Sure, sure not. You know, there's some, 
some little things that I could I could talk about, but they're they're minor compared to how much better it's gotten here. And of course, uh, you know, there was these uh, these protests in 2020. I don't want to take anything away from those people, but um, the most most of the reason that these people were protesting is because they have been indoctrinated. They've been indoctrinated by by constant bombardment of this media telling them how unhappy they are and how bad it is here you know and uh, <laughs> there's I, I hear so so many stories about some people that go to the West they go to the United States and then they get bankrupt and then uh, then they, they can continue to say how great it is so they come back to Belarus they make a large sum of money again and then they go back to the United States and they get back bankrupt again and they're begging people to send the money to get them back you know and it's not that you make so much money in Belarus because normally you don't it's uh that's one of the problems is uh you know the pay is is low but it's as far as anything else uh i don't know maybe uh uh they don't allow you to talk about uh, overthrowing the government here but you have to also consider that you have the voice of america and a lot of these uh these outlets here and uh you probably have uh, uh ned the national endowment of democracy all this sort of stuff so all these things are are geared to overthrowing governments and the USA is doing this in South America and that's why you know in, in Africa they do it all over and, and that's why you have so many uh, people all over the world that have this this hatred of the United States because they they go in and overthrow governments and then if the if that new leader that they installed uh, you know somehow doesn't like sending all the resources that the country earns to the United States uh, then the US goes in and overthrows that government too <laughs> you know of course they loved Yeltsin Yeltsin was giving all the resources of Russia to to uh, uh, to the United States and uh, letting them expand NATO and uh, that's what they're wanting right now I think I'm not sure if that is exactly what uh, John Bolton said the other day but he has uh, he has certainly said he just said this I think it was on the 4th of October he, he came right out and admitted it but in slightly different words that Europe are puppets the European governments are puppets of the United States they cannot allow Russia to be prosperous and have a friendship with Europe because those are the United States puppet states and they control them and Russia has no right to become prosperous and obviously Germany has no right to become prosperous so why all this talk you I even saw somebody played a tape from Ron Johnson even you know who's uh, I thought was 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 pretty good. Uh, he's a, I believe, a U.S. congressman. I don't know if he's a senator. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, he's a big politician. And then you saw Condoleezza Rice. You see Victoria Newland and uh, even Joe Biden. And they're talking about at all costs they have to stop Nord Stream two. And, it, and and then you have to stop and think. Well, what is Nord Stream two? Is that something to do with military? Is that uh, is that violence or killing or anything like that? No, it's the prosperity of Germany. So in other words. They cannot allow Germany to become that prosperous. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That, is that peace and freedom and prosperity? Absolutely not. I mean, you have to shake your head. So it's like, what? What am I? What am I hearing here? Anyway, that, that's that's all I have to say right now. I, I have. I'll be doing a couple more videos, but maybe I should just make that one video. Uh, and like and subscribe. There's more coming. Thank you.